Hey, welcome to Hammered Ironworks. I'm Dave, if we haven't met. This is episode number eight. Count them up, that's a lot. Well, not really. Anyway, in this episode, you'll see me take some scrap out of a dumpster and forge this hairpin. I don't even have hair, but I made a hairpin. This is a giveaway build. So in this episode, after I build this, or actually halfway through building this, you'll see I stamp a number in it. Well, the film got a little bit screwed up, so you don't see me stamp the number in it. There's a number in the back of it, trust me. The number is between one and five. So it's either one, it's two, it's three, it's four, or it's five. In the comments, if you're from the continental United States, if you leave your guess of the number one to five, you leave your guess, if you guess it right, I'm gonna put your name into a hat. I'm gonna draw the winner and ship it to him. On the 15th of March, I'll have the drawing, but you gotta get your entry in by the 10th of March. It gives me five days to do the video thing. Anyway, get your entry in and your guess of the number that's stamped in the back of this, you could win it. Hope you enjoy the video. Oh, afterwards, stick around, because at the end of this video, you'll actually see where I draw the winner for this Railroad Spike bottle opener. That's last month's giveaway. Enjoy the video. Good morning, everybody. It's Maine. It's cold. It's snowing. I want to go to the shop and make something. Got a little rat truck action in the way, covered in dust. A little bit of truck marrow up on the lift. Got my forge pulled out, heat turned on. I gotta go put my chimney up, Woo! which you've probably seen in another video if you've been paying attention. If not, go check it out on my channel. We'll get this baby fired up, see what we can make. stuff's tough. Anyway, so I got myself some scrap iron. So check out this sweet dumpster find. Let's see if we can scavenge something and build something with it. Haha, -ha, dumpster score. So with these dumpster scores, I kind of got myself a section here. I'll probably nub it off to about four inches. And then I've got myself a section that I'll probably go, oh, double that. We'll do about eight inches. So I'll cut these down to size and then I'll end up tapering things out and twisting and bending and I've never done this before. We're just gonna see what happens. People, I'm gonna tell you, these are pretty stressful times because what you gotta do is just fiddle with this jewelry stuff. This, the softer side of Dave is just not really developed. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell it like it is. I mean, this stuff is tedious. I'm just trying to make myself a little swoopy curl. And then I got like a hundred more to make, or maybe four, but that's close to a hundred. Oh, man. Eyes up here. Hello. Eyes up here. 
so let's have a little talk about the state of the union here at Hammered Iron Works Forge. Having a rough time. So pretty defeated. I couldn't even draw what it was I wanted to make. I was making the wrong little swirly doodles. So then I decided to use this, and some of you might remember this. I actually made myself a drawing of what I wanted. Then I started to try to do it, struggled, ended up with trash that's not worth working on anymore. I've learned that this higher carbon content round rod, which I think it's an uh, eighth inch round rod, off of that dumpster find, that sweet dumpster find. That is harder to work with. You gotta keep it a higher temperature, blah, blah, blah. So here's what I've learned. My skills are not what they need to be to do this efficiently, but I'm still gonna do it. I'm just so during this intermission, Dave needed to go hydrate. And it's a good thing that I got this extra scrap out of the dumpster because with this, I can make more or at least redo what I already screwed up. Anyway, the producer and Dave had to have a talk about focusing on the goal, and the goal is sweet. After a little bit of a break and some rehydration, things came together. I am revived and going to go at it again. New approach, I'm just going to do it different. So I'm tapering an end, then I'm going to start to scroll the end just a little bit and then I'm not going to get carried away. I'm going to draw myself what it's supposed to be and make it. Drew myself a little bit of a road map. Version 2.0. Yeah, way off the road. So I got one side sort of following my little road map, so now I'm trying to figure out where to cut it. Normally I would have cut it originally, but I've got vice grips and my hand gets hot, so if we call this the midway point, we'll roll this out to the end. I got myself a little notch that I kind of bumped in. Give myself a mark, I'll heat it up and lob it off. So when you go the wrong way with your rigging, you just go around the other way and then it's magically fixed. But that's only if you can find stuff on your workbench. Oh look, I found stuff on my workbench. See it being round, it's not going to show that I went the wrong way. It's going to look like I went the right way. Well, we're getting there. Gotta refine that some. So it's coming around. Now what I'll do is I'll go here on this edge and then over on this edge and sort of flatten it out so it kind of has a more wide look, more noticeable. And then I'll have to tune up my curves. So right here, you know, Dave's getting ready to stamp a number on the back of this hairpin. But as it turns out, his camera crew, you know, Dave, didn't hit record. And it got stamped, and you didn't see it. We got a 
put a little bit of curve to it. So I'm breathing some relief now. Things are looking a little bit better. This right here is what I've got so far. I've got it sort of polished up a little bit. Now I've got to make the pin to go through. So we'll see if we can make it all look good. Oh, I almost flipped and showed you the number. Haha. <laughs> Time to hammer out a pin. I learned, I learned that you gotta keep this stuff hot. Okay, so it's time to put a little bit of blacksmith goo. Oh, wait, wait a minute. No, no, no. Hey. Eyes up here. People, you just gotta keep your eyes up here. Let's focus. So I've talked about my recipe for blacksmith goo before, and basically, here it is. One part turpentine. One part BLO, boiled linseed oil and then one part beeswax. I have on some occasions when I didn't have beeswax used paste wax and I end up putting a little bit more in to get the right consistency but basically you put them all, I put them in this can, put them into a metal can, put some warmth on the bottom, I use fire, it kind of catches on fire now and again that happens you know or you could use maybe a heating element and you just stir it all up until it turns into an awesome consistency of blacksmith goo which is this. Alright kids, don't forget about the YouTube circle of life. You like and subscribe and all that other stuff and oh, look what's gonna happen. Dave's gonna make more videos and then it's gonna make your life better. Don't forget about that. So we gotta get these to exactly uh, 247.1 degrees. Nah, I just made that up. They gotta have a little bit of warmth in them. Little more information on the blacksmith goo. It smells freaking awesome and it doesn't leave behind any sort of a, ow, that's still hot. It doesn't leave behind any sort of a film because it's wax based and you end up just like buffing it off. But it gets into the pores, leaves you with metal that doesn't really corrode that quick. Although I'm assuming this will be up in some lady's hair or maybe some dude if he's got a mullet. I don't know. And, uh, you know, it probably won't get too rusty. Don't forget, Blacksmith Goo has the turpentine, which is like one of those spontaneous combustion... Yeah, it's big words, it's that stuff. It'll catch on fire. So you gotta like learn how to deal with that turpentine stuff. It'll catch a place on fire. This was quite a challenge. I'm really happy with the outcome. I've got it all come together. Excuse the dirty hands, it's the working man. I mean, I haven't really tried it out on my hair yet. I'm hoping it works, but I've got my tuning just right so it sticks in there nice. Sort of has a little bit of a positive detent. Got my little emblem right there, the real tiny version of it. 
All in all, I'm real happy with how it came together. I was able to turn dumpster garbage from some old mattress spring into this. Stay cheap, cheesy, and crafty. Hey, stay tuned. You'll get a chance to see who wins a Railroad Spike bottle opener that I made in my last giveaway episode. Okay, people. It's drawing time. Who wants to win that sweet bottle opener? Well, for starters, oh, wait a minute. I hope you enjoyed the whole build on the hairpin. I was really excited with how that came out, but boy, I struggled. Anyway, back to the Railroad Spike bottle opener. For starters, you're wondering, what was the number, Dave? Well, I'll tell you what the number was. The number was five. I don't know if you can see it right there, but the number was five. Funny story. I actually stamped it as 05. You saw me in the video back on the video for this. Um, I put a zero and then I put a five. But then the zero got kind of half stamped out by the five and it looks like a C5. It's zero five. So the answer is five. Now, of the people that answered correctly, let me balance that up there. People that answered correctly, I put your name into a hat and now it's time to pick a winner. Oh, wait a minute. Dave's playing games. Anyway, I just want to tell you really quick, the guy that won the hammer in my first video of this whole hammered ironworks thing, he actually is over in the Netherlands. I have not yet got a picture of him holding it. He's still waiting on tracking to get a hold of it. It was crazy expensive to ship it to him and then I got another quote that was way more affordable, so I sent it super slow, so that's kind of on me. Anyway, it's going to end up in Mark's hands. Eventually he's going to send me a video, but that's why you'll see that I'm now doing things in the continental United States because, well, I'm cheap because I'm Dave. Anyway, okay. Oh, wait a minute. Should I actually have just a little bit of a shop soda? Yes, I should. Okay, here we go. Mm -hmm. And without waiting any longer, the winner is Corey Leck. Congratulations, Corey. That's your new bottle opener. That bottle opener is coming to you. I hope you enjoy it. I enjoyed making it. Oh, that's still on? Hey, don't forget, stay cheap, cheesy, and crafty. See you next episode.